I know that there's books about um, the blessings of God and the curses and stuff. Like Derek Prince's book that I was reading with y'all that I didn't finish. But um, I'm reading Deuteronomy. God has been confirming Deuteronomy to me. Like back to back to back. He wants me in Deuteronomy right now. So I was wondering if, um, if every single like precise detail of the blessing and the curse is attributed to Christians. It may be. I don't know. And I said that because um, just certain promises God made to them, like um, he kept repetitively saying, <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's pretty much in my, in my mind already because of how many times I'm reading it. You have to diligently keep and observe all his commandments, you know, love him with all your heart and all your soul. You have to cleave to him. Don't forget any of his commandments of what I'm telling you. Like, he repeats that over and over again, kind of like what Proverbs does. And, um... I even discovered scripture in here where it says that uh, the Bible actually tells you to like, you know how we buy those little quotes of scriptures and stuff to decorate our house with? It's in here. <laughs> so he tells you to do that. Um, just so you can remember. And um, I don't think anything is wrong with that. I actually was planning on doing that with my house anyway. I'm going to, uh, I know there's like Christian shops and stuff, but I really wanted to find some good um just some good interior decoration for like a Bible quotes. And I was asking him because I read in here, which I already knew this was in the Bible, but how he doesn't want us to make any graven images of anything above in heaven, anything in the earth beneath, or anything in the sea. And I know he was talking about the marine kingdom. Was I used to always wonder, why did he say the sea? Like, <laughs> I mean, what's in the sea, you know? But probably the marine kingdom uh, you know, they have people in the Caribbean people that actually worship fish gods and stuff. So that they are more keen to that stuff than we are but so he said no graven images and he's talking about himself too because i was reading in here also when uh this deuteronomy is kind of like moses just rehashing uh exodus i think or in numbers too so um i saw where god said he purposely didn't reveal his appearance to them when he was speaking with them on the mount because he didn't want them to try to like form some type of uh graven image of what God looked like, you know, and um This is just me just uh logically speaking. I don't really understand why. I guess um I mean obviously it could probably be due to them. Yeah, I, I think maybe if we were to see what God looked like and we decided to take some type of material to try to create that, you know, we're very tempted with, um, to yield back to the flesh when we don't feel God's presence. You know, that's something that we really do struggle with as Christians. You know, even though we have the Holy Spirit and we feel connected to God and our spirit and whatnot, and we have a relationship, you don't feel that love all the time. We should, I agree, we 100% should feel that. But even I have my periodical encounters with Jesus, you know, and that's something I feel like a Christian should be walking in and living daily, but we're not. So I feel like for that reason, I think he knows that, number one, there's going to be seasons where God purposely kind of withdraws himself from you. It just kind of hides uh, from you because he says in his word, he does it purposely to try you, to prove you. To see, you know, if you're going to turn to the left or turn to the right, are you going to, you know, maintain the course? Are you going to stay faithful to him? Stay um, committed to him, even if you don't feel all those attributes of his presence and his nature all the time. So he'll do that purposely. So I think that may be one of the reasons why he told them, uh, or he may have just purposely not shown them what he looked like, even though they heard his voice. And there's emphasis on them hearing the voice. So he did it purposely. It's not that he's just so majestic to the point where you just can't see him. You know, I think if he wanted to, he could go ahead and reveal himself to you. He'd probably just do it in the spirit or something. But I think for him, um, because he is a spirit, number one, I don't think, I'm not saying that God could not have done this a long time ago. Because we're in this realm, we're in the flesh, you're not going to see God in the spirit 24-7. I mean... And if, if at that time they could have, then I mean, how much more us today? And we don't even see him that way. So I think it would just uh, serve us like a hindrance to our relationship with him. Because we would be more dependent upon that picture or that graven image. You know, even though God probably looked similar to what we may create, you know, we'll go from 
it being a hard thing in a relationship to him, you know, um, from us to him and him to us to your heart is set on this graven image, which like he said, cannot move, can't hear, can't speak, can't do anything. So um, he really puts emphasis on hearing his voice when he was speaking to them or speaking to Moses because they didn't want to hear his voice. <laughs> but um, so he really wants us to be led by his voice that maintains the relationship. Or I would say the authenticity of the relationship. It's not that there aren't in pictures that probably look like Jesus and look like um, God. Um, and if anything, I think it would be more accurate to have pictures of Jesus because people probably, people have encounters with Christ. Like, they do see what he looks like, but I still would obey instruction in Deuteronomy. I don't think that Jesus wants us making pictures of him. Now, when I ask him about, because uh, it's in the scripture, I'm going to read it with y'all, actually. <sighs> While I'm talking about it in Deuteronomy 6, where he actually tells you in the Bible to actually buy, you know, uh, scriptures and stuff and put it on your wall in your house, put it on the front, your front door. We already do that, but I think it's cool to see that it's actually in the Bible. This is Deuteronomy 6. Um, I'm just start at 5. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. And that verse 8 about the hand, the fronts between the eyes, I immediately saw the mark of the beast and I read that. I said, so that's what that means. I've heard people say that all the time when they talk about the mark of the beast, how it's uh, more so action and uh, thinking. But that's actually in scripture. So that just confirms the revelation that God gave me about the mark of the beast when everybody was like refuting. Well, what are you talking about? No, the Bible makes it clear it's going to be a chip or it's going to be in your hand. So why are you saying it? The mark of the beast is not just one thing. There's It is one thing, but there's le there's layers to that one thing okay the main thing that the mark of the beast is is somebody who is lost <laughs> that's one thing that i mean it's not i feel like because we're such a conspiracy theorist and we love like the you know the uh scientific theory sci-fi side of the bible we like to cleave to that oh no it's just gonna be a chip we're waiting for that one day, you know, that one year where it's going to be a chip. And that's when things really start popping. Like, yeah, it's going to be a chip. It's going to be a tattoo. It's going to be a lot of different stuff. It's not just going to be a chip. But the main thing at the mark of the beast is, is someone who's just simply lost. They're not converted. You're already marked. <laughs> it's very simple. You know, don't take all this extreme, like, cool, like, uh, technology for you to get chipped. And, you know, that's going to happen because they're lost. That's why. The same way, you know, you're going to get beheaded because you've already died to self in Christ. It's all just layers to the one same thing. That's why I say people, Christians should not fear martyrdom because martyrdom is just like a, a manifest completion of your death in Christ that you had spiritually. So it has to manifest here. It is manifesting here daily already as Christians. The more we, you know, stay in the word and we spend time with God and we're going through these different trials that he sets up for us with people and different things and uh, seasons so that we can die and he can uh, increase and we decrease. So it's already happening naturally, but I think the end all and every Christian is not going to be beheaded, but I'm just I'm just saying what beheading represents for that last age, the Christians who are going to be here that God has appointed. It could be me, it could be you. We don't know who he's chosen yet. That represents the completion of how you have already died to self. And that's not even really for us to fear. That's honestly for God's glory. It's kind of like God is using his Christians and his people when we get beheaded by these Muslims, because they're going to be Muslims, probably Satanists too, but mostly Muslims. Um due to Obama's control and stuff. It's kind of like he's using his people as his museum pieces for the world. You know how Israel was always a example for the pagan nations that were surrounding them. Well, it's the same thing for Christians. When Christians finally get beheaded in the tribulation period and we're going through all this crazy persecution, is God kind of putting us on this stage and showing you or showing them, look at my finished work. You know, when your head gets cut off, well, it was already cut off a long time ago. A long time ago, when you first came into the faith, you already died 
with Christ and you're about to get risen with Christ as well. So you actually being beheaded is just for God's glory. Now we see it as fear and oh my God, it's horrible. It's so morbid. It's all, it is morbid. Like of course God did not create flesh and he didn't create human beings to just be massacred and you know, <laughs> all this different stuff. But he works all things according to his will for, for our good. So I mean, he's great at that. So that's honestly what beheading represents. But the mark of the beast is very simple. Um, it's it's one thing with different layers to it. It's not just a chip. It's not just a tattoo. Um, it's simply somebody who has not yet been converted and born again into the kingdom. It's very that simple. You're already marked. That's why he said in John, if you don't believe that I am who I say I am or that I am the son, you're already condemned. I didn't come to condemn you. I came here to tell you that if you don't receive me, you're already condemned. <laughs> you know, that's all he was saying. You're already marked. When I was watching that guy's video about, uh, it wasn't about alchemy. I don't know why I keep saying alchemy, but the guy who, uh, you know what? I want to bust him. He uh, disabled them comments for a reason because he know uh, he ain't right. He gonna use our Bible to preach this uh this science and this doctrine about um I don't even know what you would call it. I guess I guess it is alchemy. It, the video didn't say alchemy, but I think that's what he was teaching the science about the stars and the sun and the moon, how they are God and stuff. He was using our Bible to teach that, but I just read in Deuteronomy where God said himself, make sure that you're not deceived to end up worshiping the sun, the stars, and the moon. So how can this man read our Bible and say, no, no, it's in your Bible. You know, it really means this. It doesn't, it's not literal in your Bible. What you mean it's not literal? So you mean to tell me when you was going through all them scriptures to, you know, confirm your little false doctrine, you didn't see blatantly in Deuteronomy. Unless you be snared and end up worshiping the stars. So, yeah, he saw it. He ignored it. So... I saw that and I was like, he a trip. And he disabled them comments because I would have came for him. <laughs> it's so strong. But no, he already chose his path. He don't want nobody to refute it. Uh, people are like that. They already made their choice. But um, yeah, the mark of the beast is just, um, it's just somebody who simply has not believed or received the gospel yet. You're already marked. And I brought him up because he was really putting so much scientific emphasis on the man, how 666 actually means carbon and melanin when it comes to the man and uh, why they believe we're God. Now, I will say, if you really listen to the science behind what he was saying, it's really amazing. I'm not going to lie to you. But to me, it just shows how, what the Bible already says, how we're made in the image of God. You know, we're uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. So that, that alchemy science is true. But no, we should not be worshipped because of that. I think God should be worshipped because we're made in the image of God. So all that science that they break down, how 666 means melanin, and uh, carbon and uh, just really about the flesh and the man and how I just think it's kind of unfortunate because the only way somebody could be snared by alchemy I feel is if they sincerely had no perception of God because when I see it and when I hear that science I just see scripture like okay yeah the Bible says that we're made in the image of God we're fearfully and wonderfully made you just kind of giving us the science about it you know and for that reason, God should be worshipped, not us, <laughs> you know. And um, he was just breaking down 666 and all this different stuff. And I was like, oh, so that's why Revelation says that uh, 666 uh, is the number of man. You know, so I think the science behind alchemy is interesting and there's some truth to it. Um, I personally wouldn't just go to it unless the Lord gave you permission to do that and go watch that stuff. I haven't watched anything like that since, but... You know Satan always got to throw like a 1% lie somewhere. So I, I just wouldn't take it in for that reason. I feel like if God wants to teach us that science, so he'll go ahead and reveal it to you. But a lot of things he was saying was on point. And he was magnifying the science and the spiritual connection with man and our spirit and how it's connected to the planets and stuff. And I said, well, I believe that because of who made us. <laughs> Not because we are God, you know. But, um... And I said, um... So, the mark of the beast, I see why it's going to be so easy for people to be ensnared and take the physical mark because they're already marked up here. Now, I don't know whether everybody in the um, end times is going to end up falling into the new age. I know that's something they're really going to be blowing up in the end times, but I can't dictate whether everybody in the whole world would just fall for the whole new age thing like they're gods. I really don't know. Um... And I don't believe everybody will, but at the same time, the Bible says that uh, the whole world shall worship the beast in his image. 
And I said, okay, you know, Christians, we, we read this. And I don't think we have any real revelation or understanding of what scripture is really saying. I think when it says the image of the Antichrist, you got to think of who he is. This is somebody who's coming to be claiming to be God as well. So I believe the Antichrist is going to believe not only be propagating all those religions, but he's going to believe all of them. He's making them one because they already believe that we are one with the sun and the stars and the planets. So I think the new age or I should say the last age. That shows how deceived they are. They call it the new age. No, y'all about to die. <laughs> y'all about to get roasted from what I'm reading. So it's their new age and it's our last age. But they can be deceived and believe whatever Satan told them. He's a liar. But um, it sounds like Obama and the false prophet, the Pope, and everybody around them, uh, it's already going to kind of be, I feel like they're already kind of building up the new age you know philosophy and they're propagating this because you see it all over instagram like there's people who are so ignorant on social media now like i said they're insecure but let's not even go there who are rocking you know the uh yin and yang symbols and the whole the tree the as above so below stuff and they're calling themselves being woke you know so that's already coming up and i feel like it's really just prepping people to receive the antichrist because he's going to be the embodiment of all of that it's like he's Jesus, but the opposite. <laughs> That's why he's Antichrist. He's going to be everything that God is, that Jesus is. Because if you listen to that man in his alchemy video, he was describing Jesus and the science behind him so perfectly. He just would never attribute the glory to God. He never did. But everything he was saying, I feel like was on point. So since they pretty much remove God from the equation and they say, no, 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 it's the sun and the stars and the moon that are God because you know our molecular structure spiritually and everything that we are is one with them and you know we are God so it's just this circle of you know the above is God and we are God as well it's just this cycle of just Godhood that's what they believe so I was like okay now seeing that not to mention the many other layers of what of the different religions that probably have the same exact beliefs all of that is coming together. You really got to take into consideration. That's all of that is coming together in this last age. And you need somebody who's going to be the embodiment of all of these things. Yeah, all that stuff. You need somebody who's going to be the embodiment of all that for it to truly be convincing. And God, I was actually praying about Obama a few days ago because the sister in Christ, she had a dream about him. And God told me that no, Obama's not going to be possessed by the devil. I don't even know where he got there from. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> and I was wondering like... Because I used to always believe that, like, oh, well, he's going to be possessed by Satan. This is the one man that's going to be possessed by the devil himself. The Bible does not ever say that. God told me that Satan will give Obama powers. Satan is not going to physically possess him himself. I don't know if Satan could ever do that to somebody. I really don't know. But I believe that Satan is just going to, in you know, in um infiltrate or really feel Obama with all these powers, he will be using him as a vessel the same way that God did with Jesus. I don't believe that Satan is actually going to physically come into Obama and just be reigning through Obama. He can still reign through Obama and live through him just by, you know, having him as a vessel who's yielded to Satan. Just like everybody else is, except it's going to be on a higher level. It doesn't mean that Satan is going to physically possess him. But God told me about Obama. He said that there are different antichrists, just like Judas. They're all given a choice. And that's one thing I was always curious about, because I was like, does Obama know who he is? Like, because he's still a man. And, you know, um, I always knew he was the antichrist. God told me that in 2012, so I never prayed for Obama. I would see Christians say, you know, we'll pray for him. Pray that Obama gets saved. And I'm just like... You don't know who he is. <laughs> so, uh, I would, I would just always wonder, you know, because I was like, well, he's still human. He still has a soul. I don't believe that God would, you know, make a human being and there not be some, you know, just their composition of who they are. They have some choice to receive him. And God said he did. He has a choice, you know. He said that he did come to him. He did, you know, deal with him or whatever. And he said that Obama is aware of who he is. He told me he knows exactly what he's doing. However, he's deceived by Satan and he thinks that he's going to gain something when he does go there. I asked him if Obama knew he was going to hell. He said yes. So Obama is not, he's deceived in the sense of he's believing Satan's lies of what he's going to receive and reap as a harvest for what he's about to do. He's not deceived in the sense that he don't know who he is. He knows exactly what he's doing. And uh, God said as far as Christian persecution and what he's about to do, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's wicked. 
he's only deceived in the in the sense that he thinks he's going to get a reward from it. <laughs> he doesn't know that he's going to hell to, you know, suffer the judgment of God. He thinks he's going to hell to probably reign with Satan or something stupid. I don't know what the devil told Obama, but that's what God told me. So the man is wicked. Um, several Christians have had dreams about him. It's all over YouTube. I mean, it's uh, at this point, it's really just you going to the Lord for yourself and really asking God to confirm to you whether he's the Antichrist or not, which he is. But um, the man is wicked. I mean, when God told me that, I was just kind of like, you have to be evil to, you know, <laughs> it's not that you, I could see if like he was deceived, like convinced that he's some Messiah, you know, and this angel told him this. Now I could understand that like, okay, the brother really just need a wake up call. But no, God said he knows who he is. He knows from a biblical perspective, he knows exactly who he is and what he's going to be here to do. He's purposely going to kill you. He's purposely going to defame Christianity and slaughter everybody. He's purposely going to do all these things for his daddy, Satan. He knows exactly what he is doing. He's only deceived in the sense of his end and reward. That's it. So he deserves to go to hell. But um, God said there are different antichrists, meaning when he told me that, he's basically saying that there are different people that Satan selects and he anoints and he chooses. You know, uh, my sister in Christ said in her dream, she saw Obama as a baby and he was being worshipped. Like they did a ritual with him when he was a baby. And I said, I believe that because Obama's mom was actually part of a cult. And um, these occultists, I don't know where she is today. There's so much speculation on who Obama's real dad is. But as far as his mom, I know for a fact she was in a cult. And um, obviously that cult is tied to what he's involved in today and just the mass, um, just combination of what Satan has always been planning to do at the end of this age. So I believe his mother knew who he was supposed to be. And I think that when Satan chooses and anoints certain children to fill that role, even in Satanism, if Satan wants you to be the bride of Satan, or he wants you to be this high level top witch, you know, Satan got his people too, just like God has his kingdom. Satan will mark that baby or he'll mark that person in their womb. He can send demons into that womb, you know, so the baby can be born. That's why they say they born, they're born with all these spiritual gifts and they have a gift of prophecy. You know, I just have this gift of intuition. I hear Christians talk like that, like, oh, they're running my family i said honey that's not the holy spirit your family got some familiar spirits of divination that all y'all need to get delivered from there's no such thing as you being a lost person and you were unsaved and you have not received the holy spirit and salvation through the gospel and you have spiritual gifts that's satanic and that's demonic that is not god and I, i've heard so many christian sisters talk like this all i hear i immediately just um just discerned uh what they call it that uh <sighs> What is the word that I wanted to use? The, um, forget it. I'm not about to waste some more time thinking about it. It's just, it's not God. And to be honest with you, I was shocked listening to some of these sisters when I would talk with them because they would just talk about this so casual, like, oh yeah, they're running my family. My grandmama have dreams, you know, and we all have this spiritual. I'm just like, how are you saying this right now and you're not picking up in your spirit the holy spirit is not communicating to you that that's not him and then like when they talk to me about their family the family isn't even saved so how is it that you think that this is god that you have that gift i'm about to read that too it uh deuteronomy that's not god that is not god no i mean evil spirits they can see the future there's false spirits of prophecy, and uh, I'm not saying false in the sense that what they show you and tell you isn't true when you dream that and when you have that intuition. It could very much well be true, but they're going to use it for their own motives, and that's what makes them false prophets and, and false uh, spirits, you know, counterfeit spirits. But, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, his mom. Uh, she knew, yeah, so when Satan chooses these people, witches and stuff, or, um, let's say it was you or something, Satan, you know, appointed you, and God actually revealed this to me about me, I probably shouldn't be sharing this, but the way I get attacked by demons, it's insane, and God has confirmed to me several times that they have wanted me to come to that side, and, you know, that explains, I went through all the stuff I went through when I was 14, getting into the gothic stuff and witchcraft and all that, I actually felt demons come into my room a couple nights, um, uh, not a couple nights ago, a few months ago, like last year, and um, I didn't feel that they were here to um, to do any special kind of harm to me. I felt that they were here kind of beckoning me 
you know, and it was very overwhelming. I could feel the power, you know, you really do need to be under God's covering. I know we always, you know, speak against demonic spirits and stuff like, oh, we got power over them. We got authority. We do as long as you under the covering. <laughs> okay. There's, there's, these spirits have the ability to seduce you to where you will yield to them. If you are not protected by God's covering, abiding in the Holy Spirit, staying in his word, cleaving to God that's why he stresses it so much in Deuteronomy you really have to cleave unto me it's not that it's not that you don't have authority and power over demonic spirits you just need to understand that that authority and authority and power is through Christ over them you don't have any special power over demons and that does not take away their power and the abilities that they do have you're just a man so that means if you were to come out of that covering You'll be fresh meat for demons. I don't care how saved you've been. I don't care if you've been saved for 10 to 15 years. You are nothing without God. Period. So yeah, when they came into our room, I felt like they were beckoning me. Like they wanted me to join them. And I could feel the seduction of on me. I had to pray so hard to resist that. I'm not saying that because that's something in my heart that I wanted. I'm just telling you, they do have the ability to put that on you. I've read that several times with ex Satanist testimonies and in books and stuff. I even bought some more books about that. They say the same thing. How they were just always kind of lured into it. They just felt drawn all the time. You know, if you're, if you're dealing with that type of demonic oppression, sometimes it's not always a heart thing. It's just the spirits that you're dealing with. And this is why we need to be under God's covering. Get out of your pride. You cannot defeat Satan with anything. Nothing. Whatever resistance that Satan has when it comes to you is because God himself is protecting you. And this is why it's very important for us as Christians to always stay under the covering of God. But uh, God actually revealed that to me. And my sister in Christ, he's uh, he has one sister in Christ who he used to give dreams to about me. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but she just told me. She said, when I saw you, you were just someone very, very powerful. And I could tell the enemy was really, really using you. And, um... This could be the case for all Christians, and um, sometimes I think it's just certain people that the enemy may just want to use. He could probably see your future and your destiny in a certain dimension um, that God allows. I don't think Satan knows everything. I just think he can see certain things, and he may want to take that gift that God is going to use you for, and he wants to bring you into his kingdom so that he can utilize that gift and see, oh, she's really good in this area. You know, she's really good speaker in this area. You know, she's really this and that. I can use that in my kingdom, and, you know, blase, blase, blase. So um, I think that when Satan chooses people like babies and stuff, he starts early. Don't waste no time. You find these children got raped somewhere when they were a child. They were molested. Satan did something early on to where they to where his demons could get in. You got to break the baby down really, really early. If Satan wants to use that child for his kingdom, he will do stuff like that. He'll have them be raised by a pedophile or have them have experience some type of sexual abuse because they have to be broken down. There has to be a hedge that's been broken. Um, I think that depending on, for the most part, everybody is born demonized, I believe. that Just because everybody's lost, everybody's fresh meat for demons. Unless you were really blessed to be born into a Christian family where they really knew about spiritual warfare and they knew about the word of God and they kept themselves pure while they were pregnant with you, that's the only way you would really be safe being born as a baby, you know. In a, under true covering but for the most part we are born uh already with demons some people are born with the spirit of rejection because they could feel the mom didn't want them or the dad did not want them or you know i was born in fornication <laughs> my parents i watched my mom and my daddy get married so obviously those spirits of aversion probably already passed on to me satan is just waiting for the right time for when that child okay can't talk right i'm sorry it's just tacky <laughs> satan is waiting for the time where that baby he's already working on the baby's mind in grooming that's why a lot of homosexuals think well i was born this way you they were born that way but it was due to demonic influence not be just not because god made them gay god did not make you gay so we're not saying that you were not born that way i'm just saying god didn't make you that way <laughs> okay that's the enemy people are born with these demonic spirits it just takes some time for the child to become developed to where satan can finally begin grooming and molding them how he wants to to utilize and use that child for what he wants to use them for and um so yeah babies are born with demons in the womb like you really i already decided honey when i have my kids <laughs> like first of all and i know this might be a bit extreme i really want me and my husband to pray before we ever have sex for the first time because i just want to be cleansed if i happen to get pregnant or anything i just want my kids to have like the best entrance <laughs> into this life and you know obviously when they come here afterwards that's me and my husband's responsibility to keep them covered and to keep them protected spiritually but i mean just the stuff that i've learned already i don't want my child born with a spirit of rejection because i have one like i don't have time for the crap 
And just in case, you know, something like that does sneak in when I get pregnant, I'm going to be praying over my child in the womb. I'm going to be doing deliverance on my babies in the womb. I'm not playing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do all that stuff. And even after they, they're born, anointing oil, got it right here, <laughs> okay? You're going to be in the crib. I'm anointing your crib, your bottles, your head, and I'm casting all them demons out. No demons in my babies. I'm dead serious. So, because I know demons, they got they start early. You got you really have to pay attention to this stuff. If people have babies, I feel like Christians they have children and they think just because they're babies, they're pure. The enemy's not really gonna mess with them. Okay, well seek the Holy Spirit about that because if your child is born with a demonic spirit, I don't even care if it's a spirit of anger. I don't want no spirits in my babies. <laughs> if it's not the Holy Spirit, I don't want the baby. I don't want the spirit in my baby. So, uh, no, you have to know, like, you, you basically okay with, with this, this condemned fallen angel and, or this, you know, uh, Nephilim spirit, whatever the spirit is, you're, you're comfortable with that being in your child that you love so much as a newborn, knowing that this spirit, when you're going about washing your dishes and working and living your everyday life, this spirit is in that crib and, and you know, with your infant working on its mind already, not mine okay not mine it's, it's not gonna happen with my kids so when satan chooses these people god told me he anoints them he selects them sometimes uh satan will already be guarding that child according to different circumstances and lifestyles and the people that he's going to be born into they're going to be born into a cult so they're already trapped and if those people are really sick and committed to that cult the way that a lot of them are they're going to sacrifice that child to satan you know because that's what they believe and they're, they're so caught up in the science and uh, doctrine of these cults. You know, a lot of them, it's a lot of them are deceived. Yeah, everybody's deceived by Satan. Okay, we get that. I'm just saying that they understand perfectly what satanic doctrine and beliefs are. And that's what they're rooting for. You have to accept that there are some Satanists who are just that committed. They know what they're doing. It's not that they don't know. And oh my God, we got to save them from the devil. Some of them want the devil. It's that simple. They know who Satan is from a biblical perspective. They believe in his new age. That's really the last age. They're deceived by that. And they know about Satan's appointed, you know, witches that he wants to anoint in different children. And they have to go through these blood rituals and this ritual. And some of them are even their own children. And if that woman really believes in that cult and she's really committed to that cult like that, yeah, she's going to sacrifice her child to Satan. I'm not talking about sacrifices in death. I mean surrendering her child to the devil she will take that baby through that ritual where those demons will be infused into that baby and they will acknowledge that child the whole cult will acknowledge that child as being the anointed one that satan is going to use for this purpose when he gets older that's who obama is so i do believe that his mom was very aware of who he was probably got they probably had her get pregnant on purpose just to be a breeder for that purpose alone because satan chose her bloodline in her womb no she he has to come from this woman right here and she's already a part of the cult so yeah she down with it you know so these people are not um they're not blind bats not all of them anyway a lot of them are not blind they know exactly what they're doing so god told me that there are different selections when he said there's different antichrists there are different selections because that person could get saved meaning they could be marked by the enemy they could have gone through all those rituals as a baby and as a child they could be marked to be that person but satan is not sovereign he has no say so over your soul only god has say so over your soul so god told me he has come to all those people he's come to the witches the brides of satan you know the potential antichrist he comes to all those people the thing is, somebody got to do the job. And it's not that God chooses who's going to betray Christ. It's not that he chooses, you know, there's no, that Calvinistic demonic crap is not true. Calvinistic doctrine is satanic. It's not biblical at all. It's against the Holy Spirit. And it really taints the image and the character of God. You know, that's not true that God chooses who the Antichrist is going to be. God has foreknowledge of what's going to happen. It does not mean that you don't have any say so in what you choose to do. He just knows what you're going to do. He mean, he's God. <laughs> he knows. So that's why he's able to prophesy. He prophesies because I know what you're going to do before you do it. That's why when God gives you prophecy about like a future job you're going to have or, you know, with your mama, with your somebody in your life going to do like three years on the line. I, he knows their hearts. That's why he can tell you stuff like that. This prophecy. I know they have this in their heart about you. That's why I can show you this five years before it happens. OK, so it's not that God chose Judas to betray Christ. I'll even go as far as saying that the way Jesus treated Judas the whole time, knowing what he was going to do, is a perfect demonstration 
um, in a type of itself how God has grace upon everybody. So Judas had a choice. Jesus knew what he was going to do. He knew who he was the whole time, but he still kept him around him to show him, I still love you. I know what you're going to do, but I'm giving you a choice to make the right decision. Look how much time you're spending with me. Look how much you're a witness to me and my signs and my wonders and the kind of heart and the spirit and the character that I have. And you're still going to do this. So Judas had a choice. And he was right in front of God. <laughs> you know, so don't feel bad for Judas. Judas knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, God did not pre-choose Judas. You know, no, no, he ordained uh, for somebody to, somebody has to do the job. And the thing is, if you want to be used to do that job, then God going to use you. But God's not forcing you to uh, be his enemy. That's that's not the case at all. Because uh, Peter uh, Peter and Judas had some similarities. The difference between Peter's and... Peter's. I, I did not say that. I said Peter's. I was close. <laughs> I said Peter's. <laughs> Peter's. Okay. The difference between Peter and Judas was Peter actually did love Jesus. He just had some living in his heart. God had to break him and humble him and stuff. And, you know, he came out really converted. Judas never loved God. That was the point. So that shows you right there that God does not really choose enemies. He doesn't choose or want you to be his enemy. If he wanted you to be his enemy, he would never die for you because you're already his enemy. <laughs> you know, you don't have to make you an enemy when you're already an enemy of God, you know. So, no, it's a choice that people have. God has dishonorable vessels that he uses to get the dirty work done. If he wants to judge somebody who's been cheating on his wife for 30 years and he gets killed up and stabbed that night, God is going to use a vessel of dishonor to kill that man. Now, did God make the vessel of dishonor kill the man? No, God is not evil. There's no darkness in him. He's not going to make somebody do it. But because that was already in that man's heart and God wanted to take that man out who was cheating on his wife, yeah, I'm going to use him to go ahead and do that. He's going to be judged for it, too, because he murdered somebody. But I'm just, I'm just showing you. This is already in Sovereign God by David Eels. Amazing book. Y'all need to get it by a really, really cheap book. But um, if you want the link to that, just, just comment. I'll let you know. But the point is, we have a choice. God can know where you're going when you die. He can know all this stuff. But that does not change the fact that you had a choice with each and every single one of those situations. You had a level of awareness to where you can make a conscious decision on what you wanted to do. So Obama is aware of what he's doing. Okay, you don't need to pray for Obama. Obama's already made his choice. Okay, and if he did not already make his choice, then God would have no reason to tell his children since 2008. And probably some of y'all years before that, you said God told you who Obama was. If God did not already know that Obama was going to make his choice and he was going to choose to fill, fill up that part... Y'all know there probably were previous antichrists that Satan had already chosen and marked, but Obama was the one who actually wanted to take up the call. He's going to walk into that prophecy, and he's going to be that man. He's going to be that person. He's already made his choice. Stop praying for Obama. It's not going to do anything. Okay? It's not. <laughs> okay? I understand the con to the pray for him, because the Bible does tell us to pray for our leaders. That is true. However, um, I feel like when you have a dream from the Lord or a prophetic vision and God is exposing to you who this person is, pay attention to the initial impression that you feel in the dream, because that's how God, that's what God wants you to feel. How did you feel when you had that dream? Did you feel like God was showing you this is him? Or did you feel like God was showing you, hey, this is him, this is what Satan is planning to do, but pray for him. That's two different things. If he was just showing you this is who this, is who this man is, he already made his choice. You ain't got to pray for Obama. It's not going to do anything. He's already rejected Christ. So, um... Yeah, I wanted to say that about Obama. So when it comes to the mark of the beast and uh, 666 being melanin, you know, pretty much man, they worship man as God. We are God and we're a man. It's all this science just really amplified about man. And that's why they always do that. I'm not doing it. They always do the 666 thing. So once I learned that, I was like, okay. So they're not just talking about Satan when they throw up the 666. They, we don't understand what they believe. So that's why we're always like, they're a devil worshiper. <laughs> They don't just worship Satan, they worship self. And uh, the Bible says that 666 is the number of man. So they really worship themselves as gods. They have all this science behind, you know, uh, like I said, the molecular structure about us, how we're connected to the planets and everything that God made, basically. But they just, like I said, kick him out the picture and, you know, that's what they want to do. So, um... For that reason, that's why I said, that's why I started talking about Obama. I feel like when the world finally bows down like revelation says they're going to worship the beast in his image at first i was thinking his image i was like is, it, is he gonna like build like a actual like statue kind of like nebuchadnezzar did a long time ago i mean he could but 
I think his image, I think when the Bible says they will worship his image, I think it's just his image as God, the Godhood, that they're all going to be chasing because they're going to be a part of the New Age philosophy. So, um, and really the power behind that philosophy and that doctrine is Satan himself. So it's kind of like you become a child of the devil when you when you fall into sin you're already shaped and born into iniquity and sin so you're already a child of satan jesus made that clear when he would talk to the pharisees you're not a child of god until you are converted and turned right side up through faith in the gospel so you're already a child of satan so it's i think it's an amazing trick for satan to get these lost people to worship themselves and they believe this uh this enlightenment about them being god and trust me they have demons to attribute that so of course they're going to have all those supernatural experiences to make it convincing so they truly are deceived but um if they're worshiping themselves as god and it's satan who is behind all those planets <laughs> and all this zodiac and these uh different elements to what they believe then really they're worshiping satan through themselves it's really what they're doing and I don't, I don't really know what the purpose could be in them wanting a Messiah in the first place if they already believe that they're God themselves. Maybe there's something to that that they know that I don't, that I really want to know unless God tells me. But I, I, I think that Obama is just going to be the forerunner and he's going to be like the ringleader of them um, believing that, that, the, that, that they are God. And he's probably going to be like their biggest inspiration. And I don't know what Obama's going to do, I mean, in, in layers, but... It could probably be something like that. And um, that's how Satan's going to get his worship. It's something about man being connected, the beast in man, the flesh. You know, before you get converted, the, the flesh and the beast in man being connected to the beast himself, who is Obama, and also uh, Satan as their father. Satan is your father if you're walking in your flesh, because you manifest all his attributes when you're walking in the flesh. You are. And when you're unconverted, when you're unsaved. So, um, there's some deep science behind that that they know. But for the most part, we have the surface la layer. Because Jesus told Peter, you know, uh, he rebuked Peter when Satan was speaking through Peter, speaking through Peter's flesh. When he said, no God, no God, no Jesus, that's not going to happen to you. You're not going to get crucified. You know, he's basically like, um, get thee behind me, Satan, for you are not for the will of God. You are for the will of man. So... It's something about that flesh and that beast, that whole 666 melanin karma, you know, man is God. And all that combined is really Satan <laughs> in, in, the, in man. And this is why fallen man is going to worship Satan through the beast. They're all going to be one mind. That's why people are going to take the mark of the beast. They're not going to take the mark of the beast because, oh, the government's going to force them to. And it's going to be this crazy left behind movie. It's not going to be nothing like the movies you saw. It's not. Maybe in terms of like craziness and chaos, but that's really why they're going to take it because they're really already one with Satan because they're fallen. That's why Jesus came with the gospel to save them from that because Jesus already saw ahead of time where it was the where they were going to end up. If you don't receive me and who I am, that's why he was telling me, John, you have to believe that I am who I say I am. I'm your only hope. If you don't receive me, you're already condemned. I'm not trying to condemn you by saying that. I'm telling you, you're already marked. You're already condemned by the Father. Your father, Satan, if you don't receive me. I'm the way to life. I'm the only way you can be saved from this age and what's going to happen somewhere down the line. You know, you're going to go to hell with him. So, uh, that's the only way that would make sense for the Bible to say the whole world will fall down and worship Satan, the beast. The whole world. Not us. We're not of the world. That's the difference. <laughs> okay? Not Christians. Christians are not going to do that. Christians are going to be beheaded. We're going to be giving glory to God through sacrificing our lives and we're going to go home. Now, the world are already one mind and one spirit with Satan because they're unsaved. They're already just like him. They're in their flesh. They are wicked. They're murderers. Even if they don't murder people, it's in their heart. They're murderers. They're blasphemers. They cuss. They fornicate with people. They're just manifesting every attribute of God that is not... Every attribute that is not God. The complete opposite, which is Satan. And that's where the whole yin and yang things com thing comes from. So they're already children of the devil. If anything, I think that would just be something to really ensnare them. And I, I don't know what Satan is planning to do. I just know that I don't have to worry about Satan's plans as long as my attention is on God, okay? But... 
people have a choice. I mean, it's not something I would really definitely pray for people. You know, definitely let the Holy Spirit lead you with who to pray for and how and how extreme, you know, you should intercede for somebody. But just know that people have a choice. Somehow God gets through to that person and they acknowledged it. It bore witness with their heart and with their spirit and with their conscience. And after that, they made a conscious decision of how they wanted to respond to God when he did draw them. So when you read that the whole world is going to fall down and worship the beast and his image, well, God already told you, I think, in uh, Corinthians that um, he's going to turn those over to a strong delusion who believed not the gospel. That means that they had the gospel presented to them first, but they rejected it first. Those are the people that God is going to turn over to a strong delusion to believe all that new age mess. So they deserve it. <laughs> don't don't feel bad for these people. Like God does not feel bad for these people. Like yeah, it grieves him, but no, you made your choice. You know, we already went over in my older video how God wants a relationship. So it's not even really a matter of Christians trying to force people to get saved so they won't go to hell. It's a relationship, and you can't make somebody be in a relationship with somebody they don't want to be with. So he's just gonna let them go and turn them over to what they want. They're all gonna go to hell. They're gonna get deceived by those new age spirits and all those principalities that are gonna be reigning through Obama and all these other people, all these celebrities and stuff. And uh, we're gonna see some stuff. But um, I mean, they can they can have their party here. We're going home, whether we get killed to go home or you know whatever. We're going home. And they're going straight to hell. And all that alchemy video did with that man breaking down the science behind a human. All it did was show me. Because I mean it's kind of pointless because like y'all are doing so much time like magnifying this human. But I mean when you come to Christ you're going to die to self anyway. <laughs> so it's like you did all of that just to eventually come right back down and crucify that man. That's exact all that science is exactly why he needs to die because we don't want Satan, Satan trying to reign through him and use that flesh, you know, for his own purposes. We want to die and be crucified with Christ and be resurrected with Christ and live unto God through our spirit. So the science is great. It shows that God is really amazing and made the image of God and whatnot. Like it's something I would take and probably just glorify God with even more, but I would not use that to glorify myself and it's very dangerous doctrine.